What's up guys, this will be uh, my first video in my convolutional neural network series. Um, the first thing we really have to go over here is data exploration. So before we do any machine learning, before we do any of the uh, work with TensorFlow or Keras and any of that stuff, we need to go over data exploration. And you only really need to get it in or get all of your data in a very simple format. Um, and once you learn the format, this is pretty much how you'll structure your data every single time that you have a problem like this. And the problem that we'll be solving is a multi-class uh, image classifier, right? So this notebook will show you how to download and examine data um, and essentially explore it to make sure that it's in a format that will be uh, good for to feed into a convolutional neural network. So our goal is to achieve a folder structure similar to the following. So a master directory here, um, I just called it data, but it could be called anything, right? And then a train and val label, um, val standing for validation. So under each one, you'll have all of the labels or class names um, for, for the different images in, uh, in your data set. So, and then you'll have all these different images under the label. And you'll have the same exact thing for the validation set here. Some people will also append a test set, but just for um, learning purposes in the beginning, it's good to just start with training validation because that's all you really need to train a neural network. So we're not going to need a whole lot of uh, libraries for this. We just need about four, right? So we'll import them here. We're importing pathlib to deal with your file system, to rename things, to make directories, all that kind of good stuff. Um, Seaborn for good looking plots essentially, matplotlib to plot those plots and uh, show images, and pandas uh, to create data frames which you'll see how we use them later on. Um, the first two commands here are not even Python, uh, they're essentially just shell commands. And you can run a shell command in a Jupyter notebook by just putting a exclamation point in front of it. So any shell command, you don't need to open up another terminal and do all that kind of stuff. You can just run them from here. Uh, we're going to be running the curl command to curl down a data set to work with. Uh, we're going to be using ImageNet 160. If you're familiar with the original ImageNet, you know that it's humongous. Um, ImageNet 160 is not that big. So it's kind of ideal to work with here where we want to do multi-class uh, work, um, but we don't want you know millions and millions and millions of photos. So this is good here for our purposes. So we'll download that. It should only take about you know, 10, 15 seconds to get it down. Um, the next thing we'll do is we'll untar it. So once it comes down, uh, we can see that it just came down right there. So now we'll untar it. And the reason I'm using this capture command here at the top is because if I untar it um, without that, it'll just you know, blow up in the output there and standard out. So we don't want to see that. So we untarred it. It's right here. Um, so essentially, if you look up here, okay, data is now going to be ImageNet 160. That's what we're actually going to be calling data. Luckily, inside ImageNet 160, we're already given train and val. Um, this data set is pretty nice to you. It doesn't give you everything in a very weird format. So that's good. Now inside each one, okay, this is what we expected, labels, right? So what do these labels mean? Well, you don't know, right? Um, you're gonna have to go through and find out what's actually in here. So this is kind of data exploration, like the very beginning, right? So in this first one, it looks like it's fish. Um, it's actually a specific kind of fish, it's called a tench. So that's one. Uh, I don't know if this is the same one. So yeah, so in here we have dogs. Uh, they're actually a specific kind of dog. This is a English Springer. So if you go through, you can find out what every single one is, but this really means nothing to us. So pretty much the first thing we're gonna wanna do is, well, okay, we can print them out, right? So we can iterate through the training path, which is ImageNet 160 train. So let's iterate through it and print the directory stem, so the last directory. And then instead of using these names, since I already went through and found out what everything is, 
I'll just rename them to something a little more human readable, right? So attention, English Springer, cassette player, chainsaw, so and so forth, right? Um, the next thing we're going to want to do is, okay, we created a list with all the class names. We printed that list out. Well, now let's actually rename them. So pay attention to these here. After I run this command, they should change. There they go. So now they're all the right thing. And we can find out by going inside them, okay, is our cassette players in here? Uh, well, that's an interesting looking cassette player, but I guess maybe that's the cassette player down there at the bottom, right? So here's a cassette player. They're all cassette players in here is what I'm getting at. Um, and we did the same thing for the validation path because right now we've only been looking at the training path, but we can go back um, and see, okay, it updated everything for the validation path as well. So the next thing we'll do is begin exploring the data. Um, so the first thing we're going to need is just a list to hold the images and then we're going to loop through the class names and just get the first image of for every single class. That way we just get a sample of every single class. Of, of every single class. So that's all this does right here. And now we're actually going to want to see um, what, what we just grabbed, right? So we're going to create a subplot here that is going to be 2 by 5. Um, with a fig size of 22, uh, 10 here, which is just something that works for me. You can play around with that if you want. We'll start at zero and then we'll loop through. Okay, uh, two by five for our grid. Then we'll turn the grid, we'll turn these little axes off. Otherwise, if you don't turn this off, you'll have uh, annoying grid lines all over every single image. We'll set the title for every single one and then we'll show the image. So let's run that. All right. And so here is the first image of every single directory. And this is good, and we wanted to see this because now we know, okay, the first image is a tench for uh, the tench directory, the first one is an English Springer for the English Springer directory, and so on and so forth. So we know that we got all of our data in the right place. All right, so in the next one, in this next cell, uh, this function will count the amount of files in each subclass. So we're just going to define a function, and you can use this for something else if you want, uh, that essentially just counts the amount of files per class inside of, the, uh, inside of each directory. So let's define that function, and let's actually run it. So now train counts after calling count data on the train directory, and calling count data on the val directory. Train counts will be the amount of images in there, and val counts will be the amount of images per class in uh, the val directory. So now let's create a data frame to house everything and make sure everything's right. All right, so we have 1,303 tenches, uh, images of tenches, uh, 1,303 um, English Springers, um, so and so forth. We have a few less chainsaws and only 1,300 churches, but for the most part, this is pretty even. Um, to get a better view, we can pass it into a bar plot. All right, so this bar plot shows us, all right, great, we have a pretty good uniform distribution of all of our classes, which is what we wanted to see. Um, had there been barely any cassette players, maybe like 200, this thing wouldn't be very good at um, detecting cassette players versus all of the other classes. Um, it may actually do a little worse with chainsaws, but I doubt it. This, this looks pretty good for the most part. So good to see that. The next thing we'll do is go through the validation set. Um, and we'll make sure that that has a uniform distribution of classes as well. All right, and it does. So this is good. And the other thing you may notice is that we only have, um, like at max, 50, uh, 50 images per class here. and. Uh, close to, you know, well, yeah, about 1,300 for each class uh, in the train set. So a lot less images in the validation set. And that's because the validation set, you'll see later on, isn't necessarily used for, uh, it's not really baked into the model itself, whereas the model will have seen all of these here, um, so it will, it will really know about all of everything that's been in its train set. It will only be evaluated um, against the validation set. So you still have a chance to overfit against the validation set, but it won't technically know about these images. 
All right, and in the next video, uh, we'll go over creating a custom convolutional neural network, so stick around.